Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Before we begin, please take a moment to silence all cell phones and electronic devices. All y'all that don't think yours is on, pull it out your purse. <laughs> Let's turn it off, because you know it's always going to be that one. All right, here we go. Good evening again. <laughs> My name is Felicia Hamilton from the Southfield, Michigan branch, and I will be your moderator for this session. Welcome to a series of lecture given by Yahshua the Rock entitled, What is the Meaning of Eschatology? This is a school. It is not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The executive director of Yahshua the Rock is Dr. John Quates and the president is Dr. Gabrielle Mays. In this school, I don't know which chart to use. We'll use this one. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles. They are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians, A divine title. That means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Greek language, Hebrew language, nor Latin language had any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, 
everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain. A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh, led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary aims and constitution objectives of the class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah, and tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace 
and our slogan is Speak the Truth. At this time, we would like to have the class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Carl Leatherberry, followed by scriptures, which will be, excuse me, scripture, which will be 2 Peter, the third chapter, read by Dr. Michelle Hill. Dr. Leatherberry. May we all bow our hearts and minds in the moment of prayer to Yahshua. Um, to Yahweh, for our brother Yahshua, pray that um, he utter up those prayers for us to the Father that we need. But my prayer is that he strengthen the love of the brethren. Strengthen the love of the brethren that we help each other out in the times that we need. That help with each other because some of us need it more than others. And we don't want to act like we better than anybody we actually want to act strong in your purpose and serve your purpose and pray that he keep using us as vessels to help other souls in his teaching and y'all say hallelujah class and those of you that are joining us by online I'll be reading to you second Peter the third chapter out of the holy name Bible containing a holy name version of the old and new testaments critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by AB trainer the scripture research associated incorporated and reprinted by Yahshua promotions the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the Redeemer and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of their creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of the wicked. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conduct and righteousness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blemish. And account that the long suffering of our Savior is salvation, even as our beloved brother Saul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of the things, of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from our own steadfastness but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Redeemer and Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. To him be glory, both now and forever. That's all I'll say. Hallelujah. We have our announcements.
Okay, good evening once again. Our readers for today's session will be Dr. Jada Daniels and Dr. Brittany Sexton. Thank you very much. Speakers, if you are called on to be a speaker and you are given, you are giving consent to be videotaped and for cable, TV, and internet. If you don't want to be video, please decline the floor when you are called. Speakers, please be obedient to the bell so everyone has equal floor time. This will be a three-speaker format. Each speaker will have approximately 40 to 30, 43 minutes. And we do have, I'm not sure if it's first time or returning visitor, Yanita Brown. Returning. returning. Welcome, Yanita, and we're glad you're back. Okay, one more again. Turn off those phones, because you know it's going to happen. All right, for our first speaker, we're happy to call from Detroit, our Detroit, Michigan branch, Dr. Leon Grayson. Whole lot of fixing, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to uh, be in your presence, and uh, and we should uh, we're glad to be able to come somewhere so we can learn the truth, and uh, you know everybody should have a smile on their face <laughs> because after all, you will spend some money, <laughs> you'll at least spend about two hundred seventy dollars a day. <laughs> So ain't no time to be sad. <laughs> Go ahead on and try to be happy. <laughs> so cause these things are it's uh it's a privilege for us to have an uh, opportunity to learn something about our Heavenly Father. See, and uh the name uh as uh sure one of her is the name of Yahweh. See, that's being the father, and Elohim the son, and then that's Yahshua Messiah. See, that's his Holy Spirit. Now, well, in the world, see, we have gone about, and all of us have came from different religions, some Jehovah Witnesses, see, uh, Baptist Church. See, they got a lot of uh, churches out here. They come by all kind of names. The name of uh, the Church of God in Christ, the Church of Christ in God. See, <laughs> now all them type of things. I mean, you know how uh, you gonna come to some type of understanding? See, now uh, we want to let you know that all these charts are a product of a vision that was given by Dr. Henry C. Kennedy in the year 1931, and uh, with this vision, he had went into detail to show us that uh, our thoughts about our eternal creator, how it's, it's, it's erroneous, and we've been lied to, see? Now, see, so now, that's the problem is, see, like, uh, we read about their such thing as a negative spirit or a liar, so now, and we have been lied to, and I believe you read, it says, the devil uh, deceiveth the whole world. That's you included and everybody else. See, now, so we've been lied to, and folks said, who lied to us? Uh, see, they said, Columbus discovered America. Now, see, they didn't, how can you discover something that's already been lived on? See, they, <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying, we've been enhanced with lies, and, you know, such as Santa Claus and all those things, see, and uh, you get to a point where you realize that these things that we have been taught have, have been wrong. And see, and our parents and stuff have went about to 
teach us to the best of their ability, but they didn't know. So now here, like I said, this is a vision. Now, when we read, uh, I say Isaiah, I think it says, uh, if they speak not, uh, there's no light in them. Could you read that? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. Say to the law and to the testimony. Now, we're going to try to explain to uh, uh, the, the, the law the first five books and the prophecies the last 34 books, which make a total of 39 books, and that's what they call the Old Testament. See? Now, if you don't go there to the law and to the testimony, see, there's no light in you. Because a lot of people would say, say, well, uh, I'm a new uh, Testament preacher. See? So that's what they do. They go to what they call the New Testament, see? And they say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, see? They say that's the four gospels, see? Now, those things are incorrect. And hopefully, uh, through this discourse, uh, one will show you how that uh, that is not the New Testament. See, so now we're going to try to emphasize, as the previous speakers have said, emphasize that the name of Yahweh is essential. Because without a proper understanding, see, uh, of these names and the way that they are being laid out, see, because when you go, I think that John said, no man, could you read that? That no man has seen God at any time. John 1 and 8, John 1 and 18. 18. Okay. No man has seen Yahweh at any time. Mm -hmm. The only begotten Son, which is in mm -hmm. the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Now see, it's the only the son, the only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. So now we want to go to uh, uh, Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Exodus 24, 9. Mm -hmm. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and mm -hmm. 70 of the elders of Israel. Right. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Okay. And there was under his feet, as it were, a pig. Now here, you can read in your Bible, they get, they giving you an explanation of, of the, uh, the shape and form of your creator. Now see, he got hands, he, uh, see, and he got feet, see. See, now, he ain't no monkey, well, I'm not no fool, see what I'm saying, or some type of other animal, see. But he's describing him, he's giving you a description that he had hands and feet, and also he had a body of heaven in his clearing. So now what, they are, what he's explaining there is that Yahweh is appearing to them, see, in the form of Elohim. And we got, see right here, Exodus 24, 9 and 10, so they see this super incorporeal form, see, but it don't have no flesh and no blood, see. And uh, then on, see, uh, just for sake of, of time, we won't go into Alaska. Like I said, it would take, uh, John said he saw the angel fly through heaven with the everlasting gospel. Mm -hmm. See, and then this teaching can't be given. And uh, some of us been here 40, 50, and still catching on. So it's going to take a while, see, we can't try to explain to you all these things that's locked up in the, the mysteries See, and these mysteries have been revealed. We'll show you that uh, the age is coming come close to an end. But uh, we don't have a time, time. So now here we got Elohim, see, that she's describing there. He had a body of heaven in his clearness. Then we also realize that he uh, transfigured uh, 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 into uh, this intangible tabernacle. And... Uh, and then he goes on to explain to Moses how he created the creation. Now, and now we go to Luke 24 and 44. It says, beginning at Moses, could we read that? Luke 24. Because see, there's a set method and means whereby uh, one could come to an understanding about our creator. It's just not haphazardly, all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, you, uh, you know, without a vision. And we, won't have, we can't read all the scriptures. 
I think that's Proverbs 29 18, if I'm not mistaken. And it said, without a prophetic vision, the people perish. So you, you have to have some type of understanding. See, without a, a vision, see, now we know that you got 24, 22 visions, 20, uh, 40, uh, 40, <laughs> 2020 vision. Both have 2020 vision. <laughs> now, if you got, in order for you to, to see, and identify things from a natural standpoint. If you don't, you have to go to the dentist or uh, to the eye specialist and get you some eyeglasses. So that you need some help. Now, see, in this case, see, with this vision, this got to be received. See, Dr. Kennedy said he had a vision. It's not no physical one, but see, he was shown in the spirit, see, something about our creator that we didn't know. So now. <clears throat> Uh, they had to read another certain part. Uh, Luke 24 and 44. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. These are the words which I spake unto you mm -hmm. while I was yet with you, mm -hmm. that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See, now, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law and in the prophets, and that's what's concerning Yahshua the Messiah. See, so now... When you go, uh, they say, they teach us the New Testament, see? Now, we want to let you know that the New Testament is not in the Bible, see? See, the New Testament, see, is, uh, it's, uh, it's the law of the Spirit that, uh, see, are written in your heart and in your mind. So we go to Jeremiah 31 and 31. Right. Now, the reason why you're going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah is because he made the old one with them. See, he didn't make no covenant, see, with Gentiles. See, it's the house. Now, you, you're not at the house of Israel and the house of Judah. See, but he's making this covenant, see, the new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay. What, what else are you going to say? Now, this covenant is not going to be like the covenant he made with Israel when he took them by the hand and did what? To bring them out of the land of Egypt. So now, see, now when he brought them out of Egypt, uh, we know that he divided the waters of the Red Sea and delivered the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. See, and when he delivered them out of Egypt, he destroyed Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. Now, see, but, but then when he got into the uh, uh, wilderness, so he spoke the, the commandments from Mount Sinai. Now, when he spoke that, see, so he gave them the laws. But this one ain't going to be like that one. See, now, go ahead, read on. Which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them. Now, Israel broke, Israel broke that law. See, they, they broke those, those laws that was given to them. See, and uh, see, they broke those. So now what are they going to do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay, read on. I will put my law in their inward hearts. Now this one, he's going to put it in their hearts. Go ahead. And write it in their hearts. Right. And will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother. Mm -hmm. Know Yahweh. All right. Right. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, say it Yahweh. Now, see, now this covenant, see, and they all shall know me from the least to the greatest, see. Now, so now, uh, what uh, the world have done is, see, uh, they have, uh, the law was given to the, to, to the Israelites. And what happened is, uh, we have Gentiles come along, and see, and they're trying to imitate something that wasn't given to them. See, the law wasn't given to you as a Gentile. See, it was only given to the Jew. So now, in Yahshua, what he does is he comes in, and his mission was is to fulfill, see, this old covenant and bring in a new covenant. 
So that's what he did. See, that was what his death, burial, and resurrection was about. See, it's to fulfill all those things that was written in the law and in the prophets. And I think you read that says, search the scriptures. Now, the Bible, look at you read that. Now, those Jews, see, they, they carried those scriptures around with them. All of them had a ring on their arms and everything, see. But now, he going to tell them, search the scriptures. Okay? Read on. Search the scriptures. Mm -hmm. For in them you think you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And they are they which testify of me. See, because the scriptures testify to who? To Yahshua the Messiah, see. Now, that's... Uh, so now he come in, see his mission was coming in was to fulfill those things that was written of him, see. Now how you show that, see you go back here and you'll find out that Yahweh, uh, before he delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, see. Now uh, Moses, see, Moses was uh, down in Egypt and he slays an Egyptian. So now Moses uh Pray for his life, see, he, he flees from Egypt, see, and uh, goes into the wilderness where he, he, he takes on a wife, and therefore uh, he was uh, commissioned to go back down to Egypt and uh, deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now, when he delivered them out of Egypt, see, he's delivering them according to a pattern. See, and this is what separates the school because, well, we teach the true names. See, and, uh, and we also show you that there's a pattern in operation, see, and that Yahshua's mission was not to set up a Christian example for us to follow, see, but his mission was to come in to fulfill those things that was written in the law and in the prophets. He said, search them, because then them, see, you think you got eternal life, but read, they testify of me. So that's what he's letting them know, that the scriptures testified to him. So you go back here with, uh, with uh, the children of Israel, and they delivered us from Egypt. Now you got them down in Egypt, see, and Yahweh instructed them to take a lamb out, see, and hold that lamb over for four days. And afterwards, see, uh, Yahweh was going to deliver them out of Egypt. So now they take this lamb out and put it on a lintel on the two side posts, which make the four points of blood, see, and, uh, uh, and uh, what he does is he delivers them, see, through the miraculous right of the the Red Sea, and then they uh, resurrect into the, uh, to the wilderness. See, so you got a principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And we also know that Chitterilla spent 40 uh, years in the wilderness. See, now this is a pattern. See, that they are going by, see, which will show you that Yahweh is uh, operating by a divine pattern. See, so now we got this elementary chart which we show you in principle that this pattern has been operating see, because Yahweh himself is the archetype. See, he's the original pattern of the universe. So everything has got to reflect his makeup. See, him, him being threefold. See, now, if we go to the elementary chart, here we, we find the principle of blood, water, spirit, and 40. Now, this chart was written so that you can see that these principles, see, the first principle you got, see, is a bloodline. See, and then you got a water line. See, and then you got a spiritual line. And then you also got that principle of a 40. See, now we go through here, we see that Adam, see, in other words, see, there's a uh, principle of a death, see, because Yahweh told him, say, in the day you eat, you will surely die. So you got that principle of a blood, see, of the death. Then you got the burial, see. Now you got a principle of him, death, a he, he was buried, but now we want to let you know that he didn't, we don't have no resurrection in this chart. You got the principle of blood, the sweat of his brow, the water, and then the angel that drove him out. See, that shows forth the spirit. Now, when you go there and read Genesis, it states 
that uh, uh, Moses, now we have to take you back here with Moses. So now we know when Moses came out of the land of Egypt, see, we read about him, see, uh, going up into the Mount Sinai, see, and Yahweh gave, gave Moses a vision of the creation and how the creation came, came in. See, now we know that six days was in the creation, and the seventh day Moses rested. So if you count those days that Moses was in the mount, he was in that mount 40 days and 40 nights. So now just like you got that principle, see, of Adam, when he looked at Adam, see, that's within those 40 days and 40 nights. So you got a principle of 40 there. See, then when you come here with Noah, see, you got that principle, it says uh, the blood, see, it will be up on the head if you hear the sound of a trumpet. See, and you don't take warning. See, then the blood is on your head. See, now this is what happened here with Noah. See, you got that principle of blood. See, then we know that was a flood. See, and then we also know, see, that which is water. See, a blood, water. And then we got that principle of Noah, see, uh, having that vision. And also the angel of uh, spirit closed the ark. So you got that principle of blood, water, spirit, and you also got that principle of 40. See, now if you go now always down these charts, see, with Abraham, you got the principle of the blood, see, sacrifice, see, and Abraham did well. That was, that was his career, see. So now you also got the angel staying there, Abraham's uh, uh, arm, See, now, so you got that principle of the blood, the water, and the spirit. Now, we know Ishmael, see, was uh, 15 years older than Isaac. So you got that principle for 40 there. Then we go here, we got the children of being in Egypt. See, principle of blood, see, the Red Sea, see, and then uh, the angel that led them out of Egypt, see. Then you also got that principle, they spent 40 years in that wilderness. And also here you got that principle in the tabernacle. See, and this tabernacle is where all the rest of these events follow after. So here you got the, the blood on the altar, the water. See, and then you also got the, uh, the whole anointing oil. See, and you got that principle of 40 all in the holy place. See, like for instance, uh, the candlestick. It was a seven branch candlestick. See, so you got four sticks on each side of that candlestick. See, table showbread, it's got four corners on it. See, so, so as the altar, see. Now, and you got uh, uh, 10 feet from the door to the candlestick, 10 feet from the candlestick to the altar, 10 feet from the altar to the uh, uh, table showbread, then 10 feet back to the door. So you got that principle of 40. Then when Yahshua come in, see, he's a sacrificial lamb, see. So now John, see, uh, when he comes to John, he said, behold the lamb of Yahweh, see. Now, so you got that principle of blood, see, him baptized by John. And then it said, uh, see, uh, spirit descend on Yahshua like unto a dove. See, so you also got that spirit. Then Yahshua was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, see. Now here... When, see, now here you see yourself. And you can see as a witness to uh, these blood, water, spirit, the witness. See, uh, that's a witness to the, uh, the record that's in heaven. So here you got, here you come along. See, you got blood. See, when a baby is born, see, you got to show a blood. See, then you got that principle of show of water. See, and then when you holler, yeah, wait. <laughs> see, <laughs> now see. <laughs> See, now, this, this, I'm saying, now, this is what you, that's what that baby tapped in. <gasps> hey, hey. See, so now here is, you show forth the blood. See, when the doctors, uh, I know it said that when, uh, when, the, when the water bursts, it's all over the doctor. So, see what I'm saying? So you got water all on you. You know what I'm saying? If you're, if you're a doctor, if you do that, that's your profession. So, <laughs> so you got the principle of blood, water, spirit, and then... It just so happened you was in your mother's womb for, uh, for 40 weeks. So there's a principle, and uh, this is the same thing. See, coming down here, see, you got Yahshua showing for his, uh, his death, and he's buried in Joseph's new tomb, resurrect, 
And then he spent 40 uh, days, uh, 40 days before he ascended. And, and so at the rest of the charge, see, you got the principle of blood, see, with, with him uh, being the sacrifice, see, and they, he's sitting there eating that lamb to show that blood, see, and Yahshua washes the disciples' feet, see. So you got the principle of blood, water, see, and then we realize on the day of Pentecost, see, they received the Holy Spirit, see. Now, Yahshua Messiah, see, uh, you got that principle of him being 33, see, and then you also at the principle, he's 33 and a half, see, so then on June the 6th, see, and then they received the Holy Spirit, see, and you got that principle of blood, see, with uh, here with the children, uh, you got uh, we're here with Stephen, see, now they, they stoned Stephen, and now Stephen is down there preaching the gospel. Otherwise, he's preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. See, and then they stoned him. Then you got the, the restoring of uh, uh, Philip to go down there and baptize the Ethiopian eunuch. See, and then we also know, see, and they fled after they received the Spirit. See, now you got the principle of the of blood, water, Spirit. See. And then this is 40, see why? They was told to go and preach the gospel to the four corners of the earth. That's a principle of uh, Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. See, and on the rest of the parts of the earth. So here you got that principle of 40. See, then here you got, uh, they, they uh, killed James. See, and then you also got that principle, see, of a, uh, they killed James here. Then you also got uh, uh, James, and you also got that principle, see, of them restoring uh, water baptism. See, now why? Because uh, Peter, Peter, before he goes to the Gentiles, when he goes to the Gentiles, Peter said, try to jap baptize those Gentiles in physical water. See, and uh, Yahweh appeared to him and told him, see, that uh, he brought it back to his members. See, John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So now we know that the 40 in this plate would represent, that's the time that the Gentiles came in was 8040. Okay? And you also got the principle, see, up here, you got, uh, see, uh, the blood. See, because they are here saying that when you drink this cup, mm -hmm. that you're actually drinking uh, Jesus' body. Our words is blood. Added, but now we know that in the law, you can't actually break, drink no blood. But that's what the world, uh, religious world telling you. See, that you have to drink that blood. They give you that cup and see in that wine, see, they call it substantiation. That the wine turns into the actual blood of so-called Jesus. Now, that's not so, see. And then you got uh, at the principle of blood, you do, the water would be, see, David Storm, see, kind of water, see, such as water baptism, see. And then also you got the principle, see, uh, right here we got the raven, which shows forth the spirit, see. And you know that you basically you got four types of religion uh, uh, Jews, I think Christians, and you got four of them, see. And uh, see, so now, I'll, I'll, that shows you that principle of 40. So we're going to show you how that there is a pattern in operation. And this pattern, see, it comes all the way down here, see, the exotology. See, now, uh, you read, really say that the, the moon and the sun, see, was turned into blood. See, and then you got the lake of fire, which was likened unto that water. See, and the spirit would be the angels that Yahweh weep from the four corners of the earth. So now uh, you receiving a spiritual body. This is exotology. See, you receiving a spiritual body. See, now, now this is the elementary chart, and, and you can learn the principle of this pattern by this elementary chart. See, now we go back. See, we want to show forth 
See that uh, these things that Yahweh showed, showed Moses about here were only types and shadows. See, and uh, they will see, I think it's Jeremiah 31 and 31. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that mm -hmm. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Mm -hmm. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand. See, it, see it's not going to be according to the covenant he made with them when he took them by the hand. Okay. To bring them out of the land of Egypt. Right. Which my covenant they break. Although right. I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Mm-hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house now, of Israel. Now, this shall be the covenant. See, not that. See, if we come down this class, we learn the difference between this and that. Mm -hmm. See, now, Yahshua Messiah is told, when he was down there, he told him that this is my body, which is broken for you. See, he wasn't saying that that crackers and uh, that bread that they had eaten, that that was his body. He said, this is my body, broken for you. See, now, now here we learn the principle of the difference between this and that. See, now, those things are, uh, are essential as far as you come into a profound knowledge. See, this is what we want to receive, see, and we just really, uh, our knowledge and minds is just a, a glimpse of the things that Yahweh uh, shows un unto them that loves him. Okay, but read on. Mm -hmm. After those days, saith Yahweh, mm -hmm. I will put my law in their inward parts. Now, what are you going to do this time, see? Now here, see, now we go back here and we read the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt, what happens to them? If they go into the wilderness, Yahweh delivered them from, from Egypt, see, and after he delivered them, see, they started to really praise Yahweh. So, oh, what a wonderful work. So Yahweh divided the waters by, the, by, the, by, the, by his nostrils. See, he divided the waters of the Red Sea. Maybe over there playing tamarines, glad that they came out of the land of Egypt and Yahweh had delivered them from the bond of Egypt. See, now, he makes a covenant with them when he get into the wilderness, see. But it's not going to be according to this one. Okay, read on. I will put my law in their inward parts and write Now, this one, he said he's going to put it in their inward parts, and then he's going to write it in their hearts, see. Now, that's why, for sure, for that we got a pattern, see, and your physical body goes on, to, uh, is, uh, it's uh, made according to a pattern. See, now, we realize that uh, when you are, uh, it's a correlation of the pattern to the man's physical makeup. See, that's why the man, see, he got a uh, intestine just like back here, see, at the altar of, of sin sacrifice. So just like your food, see, is burned or consumed, see, within your intestines. See, now here you got that principle of the altar. See, he burnt up sacrifice. See, and in order for you to live, see, always gave them instruction. In order for you to live, see, there's got to be a sacrifice. See, an animal, see, of, 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 of whatever sort, see. Now, they have to be sacrificed in order for you to live. So now you got the principle of the labor. See, over here, you got the kidneys. See, in other words, just like for washing impurities. So here, the man's got the tabernacle. See, the man's reflecting his tabernacle. See, then you got over here the eight order, uh, seven main branches. See, just like the candlestick, you got seven main branches. See, now this is, see, now they had 12 tables, uh, 12 uh, loaves of bread on this uh, table show bread. So now the man's heart, see, in general, it pumps 12 pints of blood on a daily basis. See, and also, see, you got the altar of incense, see, represents, see, the lungs, see, or see, in there, uh, uh, oxygen, see, those ingredients burned on those lungs, see, on a continual basis. See, and then you got the man, see, the head region, see, shows forth, see, the most holy place. Now, Yahweh has given these this thing, I think it's Hebrew, I think the ninth chapter, these things are example of heavenly things. If I'm, I'm not mistaken. Uh, Hebrews 8 and 5. Okay, 8 and 5, okay. 
who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, mm -hmm. as Moses was admonished now, now, of. Now, see, now, Moses, like I said, these things is a shadow and an example of heavenly things. So now, if you want to learn something about some heavenly things, see, this pattern will be a good start. See, it will be a key to you coming to some understanding of heavenly things. Okay, read on. As Moses was admonished of Elohim mm -hmm. when he was about to make the tabernacle. Right. For see, saith he, mm -hmm. that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Okay, now uh, make sure you make all things according to, to the pattern that was shown to you in the mount. So Moses was given a definite pattern, see, and he had to make things exactly the way Yahweh had dictated to him. See, now when you go into the, uh, the man's uh, most holy place, as I hear you got a most holy place in the tabernacle, see. Now... Uh, you got the pituitary gland, see? See, which is the, uh, uh, see, it's practically 10. See, and it dictates, so saying, the operation of this, this the physical body. See, now here, Yahweh had Moses to place, uh, now, the, now this table of stone was the second table of stone, because he broke the first table of stone. That's why I think it's uh, Ezekiel 36 and 25. Uh, 24, for I will take you from among the heathen right. and gather you out of all countries and will right. bring you into your own land. Right. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Right. And you shall be clean from all your now, filthy. Now, see, he, he, he wasn't going to do that. See, not your, uh, the Reverend so-and-so, she's bringing the water on you. But Yahweh himself, he said, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Okay. Uh, we will clean you from all your filthiness and right. from all your idols will right. I cleanse you. Right. A new heart also will I give you, uh -huh. and a new spirit will I put within you. Now see who's going to do that? It's going to be Yahweh to put a new heart and a new spirit in us. See? Now, it's not us, see, now, uh, it's not us trying to keep no physical law. Could we go to Romans, I think, 5 and 1? Romans 5. Verse 1, mm -hmm. therefore, being justified by faith. Now see, now see about him going to put a new spirit on him. Now what you're going to be justified is, you're going to be justified by faith. See, you're having faith in Yahshua Messiah. Now I want you to hold that, and could you read Hebrews 11 chapter? Hold what you got in 5, Romans 5, and I'm going to go to Hebrews, start the first chapter. Me too. Hebrews 11 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh -huh. The evidence of things not seen. Right. So now see, it's about the preaching of the gospel. See, see, you can have some faith. See, you can't, we ain't talking about no blind faith. See, we talking about some evidence of what you believe. Okay, read on. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Now, let's read that again. Oh. Now, faith is the substance of faith. Now, what we want to say is Yash Messiah. See, he's that faith. See, now, faith, that's Yash Messiah. See, now, now uh, uh, see, uh, okay, read it again. I want to know, twisting it up. Uh, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, Yash Messiah is the faith of things hoped for. Okay, read on. The evidence of things not seen. Right. Right on. Okay. Uh, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Right. Through faith we understand. Now, through Yahshua Messiah, see? See, you know, every, every way you say it, by faith. See, that faith is Yahshua Messiah. So if you read that 11th uh, chapter down, all the way down, see, it's by faith, see, they did this. By faith they did that. See, it really is, the whole 11th chapter is talking about Yahshua. By Yahshua, they did this and th they did that. So, so now he is that faith. See, now it said after that faith has come, uh, Galatians 3 and 24, number 10, pushing. Galatians 3, 3 and 24. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the ceremonial law was our schoolmaster, to bring us unto the Messiah, that we might be justified by faith. See, now that law, see, was given, see, why? See, it was given, see, uh, to point up sin. Oh, well, read on, read on what you got. But after that faith is come, mm -hmm. we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Right. 
You know? For we are all the children of Yahweh right. by, by faith in Yahshua the Messiah. Right. We don't. For as many of you as have been immersed in the Messiah. See, now, see, it's emerging, as the speaker said, it's emerging of the Spirit. See, I think we read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, said we all are baptized into that spiritual body. See, or that body, see, see, is having faith, see, in your Messiah. See, so that's what we have to have now, see. And uh, see, and now Romans 14 and 17, can we read that? Romans 14 and 17. Uh -huh. The kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink. See, the kingdom of Yahweh, see, back here, see, it consists because he made a, a physical kingdom, see, uh, 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 with Israel back here. See, uh, a kingdom out the kind of ordinances. See, but now, see, it, they, they had to eat and drink because, see, uh, it, was, it was mandatory. Yah's society, he kept that Passover with his disciples. So he had to keep those paths over. He fulfilling that physical law, see. But see, that wasn't the, the, the reality of it. Okay, read on. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, see, that's what the kingdom is, see. It's not you eating the Lord's Supper. Like Peter Spirit said, a lot of them, they eat uh, the Supper every day. Now, the uh, Passover Supper was supposed to be kept on a particular day, see. And that was April the 14th. See, now, um, where are you getting every first Sunday, all them Sundays, you eating the Passover? You're not getting it from the, from the, from the book. Because, see, those Jews who only keep those, they knew what they see the Passover. See, when y'all were giving to be crucified, they asked them, say, Master, where will we go to prepare the Passover? So when he come in, eating that Passover supper with him, see, he's fulfilling. See, the children of Israel down in Egypt, see, what they doing, see, they down in Egypt, see, and they got to eat this lamb before they depart out of the land of Egypt. So uh, I thank you all for the time. Hopefully some things, like I say, uh, you can't even get started to try to explain all the mis uh, some of the things that been revealed to us. And uh, it's just a, just a, just a tear. <laughs> but now Yahweh uh, is the almighty, seeing all things, and in him we live, move, and have our being. So now, if you want to know, uh, come down to school and know why you're on this earth. See, because you're living and you're moving and you're having your being inside of Yahweh. And uh, with those words, I'd like to say thank you all for your time here. Thank you, Dr. Grayson. And for our next speaker, we're happy to call the Dean of the Syracuse, New York branch, Dr. Rick Trevison. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. A lot of people here. Uh, you know, we started out on this trip, and we got about three hours down the highway, and I left all my suits and dress shirts and everything home. So a friend of mine was nice enough to let me borrow his suit and uh, a shirt. So if they don't fit right, you know, don't make fun of me. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. Uh, when this topic was introduced, uh, my wife looked up a definition of it and one of, the, one of the definitions said it also dealt with the final destination of the soul. And that was kind of what my mind was keying in on. 
And uh, it, sometimes at night I would lay in bed and I would just lay awake and that's what I thought about. I kept just thinking about the soul and thinking about the soul. Because the end result is we want our souls to be saved. Yahshua's in the soul-saving business. And we want our souls to be among those souls. And we want your souls to be among those souls. That's why we host these events. That's why we do these things. So that's kind of what I would like to key in on. Um, because there's only so much you can do in 40 minutes. And uh, I have to lay a little groundwork. I'm going to be repeating some of the things you've already heard. You've heard some pretty dynamic things today already. Um, this pattern is of such paramount importance. And it's, this pattern was given to Moses on the top of Mount Sinai after Israel had come out of the bondage and the captivity of Egypt and they were to worship Yahweh at this mount. Moses was called up at the top of the mount. And you read here, it says, panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses. Now, your speakers have already broken down to you how that Yahweh is spirit. And in this state, we cannot perceive of him. We cannot understand him. He's inconceivable. He therefore takes on a visionary shape and form that appears to Moses, John on the Isle of Patmos, our founder, all the prophets, and he's responsible for what's written in your scriptures. This is the word or son. This is Yahweh Elohim an anthropomorphic being, a visionary shape and form that can be what can be known of Yahweh is going to be revealed by him. Now if we can, let's, we might as well just get John, the first chapter, and start reading in one. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. So in the beginning of this vision was the Word. And the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. This Word is Yahweh. It's important to understand this is, and your speakers have stressed this, this is not another guy, another person as was taught to us in Catholicism. Three separate individuals in one God. That's the Trinity. It's a Trinitarian concept. That's what was taught to us. And they don't understand it. And neither did any of us. And we understand now that that is false. That he exists as a unity. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. This is Yahweh in a, vi in a visionary manifestation. It's Yahweh. Read, please. Uh, the same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. He's the creator. Read. And without him was not anything made that was made. Without him was not anything made that was made. Now, skip down to the 14th verse because we've got to expedite time. And the word was made flesh. And this word 
was made flesh. This word was made flesh. So this one that you know as Jesus, correctly identified as Yahshua, that's the word, or Yahweh Elohim, made flesh. It's Yahweh Elohim made flesh. Or it's Yahweh is salvation. And I'm just going over what other people have already done. Just laying groundwork here. This is Yahweh is salvation. And the word was made flesh, read. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Now where did they behold his glory? On Mount Transfiguration. You can read about that in Matthew the 17th chapter, which we're not going to take the time to do right now. Now, this explains the Godhead. It's the unity of the Godhead. And so you have Yahweh pure spirit, Yahweh in visionary shape and form, and Yahweh is salvation. So he's making a circuit. So when he gives this visionary shape and form, shows himself to Moses up here, he transfigures into this tabernacle. And then he shows Moses how he creates the creation by the principles laid up in that tabernacle. That's why it's so important. Now he's told to, bring, to take this down and make it down here. And I think it's in the 31st chapter where he has the Holy Spirit put into some individuals, a holy head. And Bezalel, so that this will be made without error, without mistakes. Why? Because this is a reflection of him. He's the ultimate or archetype original pattern of the universe. So this has to be built in its three, a threefold pattern. Most holy place, holy place, court round about. Why? Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua. Man is made spirit, soul, body. We went through all that to show you that in there is a soul. In that holy place is a soul. Yahweh's the God part of every man. But that soul, that's something else. And before I came down here, and I went to the same church, uh, your first speaker here Friday night, Dr. John Cometti, is he in the back? He went to the same church I went to, okay? In a little town called Salve. And Diane Emler was from that town. Is she back there? Yes. There she is. She's back there. There's, there were a bunch of us. What good can come out of Salve? <laughs> <laughs> and my brother was going to class before I went to, I came to class. And my sisters were going to class before I came to class. And I came out of the army, and they tried to get me, you understand, enthused in it. And I didn't want to know anything about it. Because I had been to school, and I had been overseas, and I had been in the service. And I thought, what can these strange people tell me about God? And they argued with me for years. And then finally I went down to a class and I went with my wife at the time. She wasn't my wife at the time. <laughs> but we went down there and it was 47 years ago. And here we still are. I'll tell you, this is... Um, your speakers also mentioned how he went, Moses went down there and freed those people 
with the name of Yahweh, with the power that's in that name of Yahweh. There's power in it. And every one of us in here was born and we took in that breath of life. We were all connected by an umbilical cord, right or wrong. And we could not breathe through the placenta, through the, um, through the uh, amniotic fluid because we would drown. So we had to breathe through the umbilical cord. Now, when the baby is birthed after 40 weeks, the baby breathes respiration from the Latin spirari, spirit, right? What causes those lungs and that heart and that baby to connect? The doctor does it. The husband does it. Yahweh breathed into those lungs. Yahweh. Just like he breathed into Adam. Yahweh. He breathed into every single one of you the breath of life. Talk about some power. I can't get ahead of myself. Now, along with this pattern up here, he get, you understand, he gets the, the, all about this. There's 33 days and there's, there's 40 days up here and he, he gets all these explanations and he gets this, these laws. And he comes down here and he's supposed to put these in here, but this, isn't, uh, this hasn't been built yet. And he sees these people raising Cain. Okay, it's a polite way of putting it. And he gets mad and he throws it down. Now this was Yahweh's heart. Yahweh wrote this in here and gave this to Moses. So he threw it down and he was, it was symbolic of Israel breaking Yahweh's heart. So he told Moses, write this in another heart. This time bring what? Your heart up there. And I'm writing in your heart. And that's the heart that got put into the tabernacle. All of this is important. Because the second one got put in here, which is a figure of the man. And so now we're going to, you have to understand, when Israel went up here into Canaan land, they worshipped every kind of god and goddess imaginable. They went up into the groves. They partied. They had orgies. They built altars to gods and goddesses in Solomon's temple. They did unbelievable stuff. And they would be put in captivity. They would cry out. Yahweh would forgive them. They'd come back. And they do the same thing over and over and over and over again until finally he said, that's it. And now we're going to repeat what the previous speaker was talking about, Jeremiah 31 and 31. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. See, he made a covenant with them back here. 
And they said, everything that Yahweh has said, will we do and be obedient? They made a marriage covenant with him back here. And they were his bride. And he was their husband. And they broke his heart. So he's making a new covenant. Do you understand? He's making a new covenant. And it's not going to be like this old one. So if you want to know anything about the new covenant, understand something about the old covenant. The old covenant... It was physical. It was carnal. It was temporary. And it was commandments. And it was rituals. And it was worshiping with men's hands. The whole covenant was like that. And he said the new one was what? Not. I don't care how badly you want it to be. It's not going to be that way. Read, please. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Which broke. covenant they break. They broke it and broke it and broke it and broke it and broke it. Read, please. Although I was a husband unto them. And he was a husband to them. He provided everything for them. He did everything for them. Read, please. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward. Place. I will put my law in them. This one back here, it was external to them. But the new one's not like that. Read. Uh, I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it in their hearts. I will write it in their hearts. He said in the old one, oh, that they had such a heart in them. Deuteronomy 5.29. They never, we're not going to take the time to get it. Oh, that there was such a heart in them. Oh, they're getting it anyway. <laughs> I, I pull such weight in here. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Oh, that there was such a heart in them. Oh, that there was such a heart in them. Read. That, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments. Sorry, keep all my commandments always. Now see, Yahweh Elohim wrote that, and he, he had Moses write that in there, and yet he knew they didn't have the heart. And he knew they, they weren't going to be able to keep it. But you have to understand, it's part of his purpose. This is all part of a purpose. This is a mosaic covenant back here. This is a mosaic law. There are various laws down through your book. And when you read about a law, you always have to Look at the context, figure out what law are they talking about. Read. Keep oh, you, you, you read in Deuteronomy 5. Okay, let's, let's finish in uh, Jeremiah, please. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall be my people. And you read down further about the law and its ordinances. And... I know I shouldn't do this. <laughs> the moon and its ordinances, it talks about. And there you got it right there, and it's covering up that sun, that that bride that's in the mystery of iniquity, she's got the moon over her head, or the old covenant, and she's got the sun under her feet. And there's a total eclipse of the sun right there. Covering up the truth. Always, always. That mystery of iniquity. Trying to cover up the truth. But this bride, the mystery of righteousness, she's clothed in the sun. The sun is over her head. And the old covenant is where? Under her feet. Under her feet. It's 
pretty. It's just the opposite. Now we're going to go to Ezekiel 36 again. We're going to pick it up in 24, please. Ezekiel 36 and 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries. We're from all countries in here. All countries. Right? Mm -hmm. All countries, all nations. Read. And we'll bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. This you is your own land. And I don't mean Chicago, Illinois. I mean where you are up here. You are in your own land. And hopefully that's in a state of peace. And that's in a state of comfort. And that's in a state of joy and happiness. To be taken and pulled out of the nonsense we were in. The darkness. This was us. This was us in the world. Taken out of that blackness, that dark, so dark, so black, so, so abysmal, we didn't even know we were in it. Now read, please. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will, I, put, you. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And as your speakers have brought out, it's not physical water. The water he's talking about is the gospel. The water he's talking about is the truth. You have to, you have to understand principles. He's sprinkling you with clean water. When you come to class, you're hearing the truth. And it's cleaning you up inside. Inside. Outside ain't going to do any good. Read. A new heart also will I give you. A new heart. And they were heart shaped too, not tombstone shaped. A new heart will I give you. A new heart. Not talking about a heart transplant. Talking about a new, a new heart. A soft heart. A warm heart. A pliable heart. Not a hard heart. Not a stony heart. A heart that can hear the truth. Because you couldn't hear the truth with the old heart that you had. I know. I, they tried to tell me stuff with the old heart I had. And that heart was harder than my head. <laughs> That's right, Seth, harder than my head. Read, please. And a new spirit will I put within you. A new spirit will I put within you. Not like the old spirit that was in there. Read. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I'll take that stony heart out of there. Read. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Give you a warm heart. A caring heart. Read. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And I will cause you to walk in my statutes. Now you don't have to worry about, am I being obedient? Am I doing, am I keeping the Ten Commandments? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? Am I walking around in condemnation? Why? Because he's causing you to do exactly what he wants you to do. And it keeps you at peace. Hold that there. Just get, um, oh, I'd love to get right into Galatians, but we just can't. Just get Galatians, the fifth chapter. Just read the first verse. Galatians 5 and 5. Oh, 5 and 1. Mm -hmm. 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore. Stand fast, therefore. Now, this is in addition to everything else he's written in this letter. Read Galatians. It's, it's, it's powerful. It's got a lot of stuff in there. Read. 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith the Messiah hath made us free. Stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty with which the Messiah hath made you free. You're free. And I don't mean free to go out here and run around and act like a moron. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about free. He said he was the truth, and the truth would what? Not set you free. Make you free. free. (laughs) Difference. Now, I want to go over where we were this morning. I'm going to try to pick up uh, loose ends here and there. Uh, I want um, Colossians, second chapter. Start reading around uh, 15, I think. Fifteen, and and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath. What are you reading out of? He said Colossians two and fifteen. Yeah, is that holy? Is that what? I'm doing a King James. King James is okay. Go ahead. (laughs) Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of the Messiah. Go to nine. How about nine and ten? For in him dwells the fullness. No, I want nailing it to his cross, but I want to pick it up a couple of verses. Oh, that's that's in fourteen. Fourteen. A few verses in how about nine? Okay. Okay. For nine. For in him dwells all the fullness of God bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities. Look, we're complete in him. Complete in him. Read. In whom also you are crucified with the circumcision, sorry, circumcised, my apologies, with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of the Messiah. Whatever he did. He did it with you in mind. When he got in the water, he took you in there with him. When he, listen, you don't have to keep those things anymore. He said on the cross, it is finished. What? This. This. It's finished. It's finished. Quit trying to do things with your hands. Read. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of Yahweh, who has raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he made quickened together with him. He quickened us with him. What does quickened mean? He made us alive with him. He made us alive. We came in here dead. What was dead? Our soul. Mm -hmm. Our soul was dead. Where did he have to make it alive? He had to make us alive in our soul. That's where he made us alive. Remember, we showed you. Spirit, soul, body. That mystery of iniquity had to get cast out of there, do you understand? And replaced with the Holy Spirit. And we got to keep reading here. Having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Blotting, look, it's, it's blotted out. Did you ever blot something? I used to take mechanical drawing courses in college and went, we, we, oh, it was the old-fashioned way. And every once in a while, you'd make a mistake with that black ink. Blot it. <laughs> you ain't fixing it. <laughs> that was it. You blotted the whole thing. Blotting it out. He blotted it out. 
blotted it, can't see it anymore. Picture these things in your mind. Read. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. This was against us. This was against us. And this wasn't even given to us. There were no Catholics back here. There were no Presbyterians back there. There were no Lutherans back there. were no Look, there were no Muslims back there. Read. Which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. It got nailed right to his cross. And it's not over here. This heart doesn't have anything physical written in it. And the, the religions out here, they've taken this stuff and brought it over here and wrote new. They crossed out old, brought it over here and wrote new and sold you a bill of goods. And we all bought it. We didn't know any better. Now, we're going to get uh, Ephesians Second chapter, first verse. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened. Now who? You. Remember that fellow that was on the floor here this morning? Talked about you and you and you. You hath he quickened. Who were? Who were dead and dead? We were dead. Listen, when Adam came out of that garden, and this was brought up right from the beginning of this whole thing, he did not receive a carnal mind. He had a carnal mind in the garden, but he had an innocent carnal mind in the garden. When he came out of here, he received a condemned conscience. A condemned soul. He covered up. He was ashamed. And look, it was not him in the transgression, but he gave up his life for his bride. Look, where did he die? He died in his soul. Do you understand? It's where he died. The physical man went on, right? Yes. He died in his soul. Where does the man have to be made alive? In his soul. Down, up. Down, up. You're made alive in your soul. Now, that's what he's talking about. Read it again. And you. And you, quickened. you. Paul's talking about you sitting in here. As well as those folks he's writing the letter to back there. Read. And you hath he quickened. Hath he quickened. Hath he made alive who were dead. Dead. I, I, I don't even know where I would be. I'd probably be dead if I was out there in the street now. <laughs> you hath he made alive. Where? In your soul. In your soul. Where you feel it now. You feel alive in your soul now. You did not before you came into this teaching. Read. Who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walk according to the course of this world. We walk the course according to the course of this world. I don't know about you, but I did occasionally. Walk according to the course of this world. 
now and again. <laughs> and look, it was a whole different manner of life. I, I, I can't go back to that. I could never go back to that. We're going to have to stop there. I want to get, because I know my time's going to evaporate. Uh, it always does. Let's see. Psalms 19.7. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect. Now the law of Yahweh is perfect. The law of Yahweh. And one of your speakers talked up here about how that law, that law that's not talking about the Mosaic law, it's talking about Yahweh Elohim. That's the law it's talking about. This law is perfect which makes Yahshua perfect. Perfect! Read. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. That's what converts your soul. Your soul needs to be converted. What? From death to life. And you're Ah, you're, thank you. <laughs> Your speakers talked about these attributes. And when those attributes take on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim, and then they take on shape and form as Yahshua the Messiah, and then on the day of Pentecost, when that Holy Spirit is poured out on them, they receive of those attributes. The same as they were in Yahshua. The same. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive those same attributes. You receive those same attributes. And now you have to grow. Seven stages, right? Start out uh, uh, embryo, and then blah, 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 and you go all the way up to adolescent, and then uh, I, I know I skipped over a few. <laughs> there are seven stages. Go up there and read them, and you get up to adolescent, and that's a toughie, and then there's adulthood, and we're all. Striving to get to that adult straight stage, which is perfection. And I don't mean perfection. <laughs> it's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about completeness. I'm talking about maturity. That's what perfection is. That's the perfection we want. And that's where we're converted in that soul. And the founder said, you know, as long as that woman was in the man back here, there was never a problem. And he, that speaker this morning even said, he called their name what? Adam. Adam. It wasn't until she got out of the man that that mystery of iniquity could have at her. And the founder said, now what we have to do is get the woman Back in the man. So the woman's brought down there, put in subjection to the devil, and now she's got to be put back in the man. Or, or as Bonnie was showing you, you understand? Back in the man. The woman's got to be put back in the man. Who's the man? Yahshua. Yahshua's the man we're the bride. He's the head, we're the body. He's the assembly. We're the members of the assembly. We're members of his assembly sitting right in here tonight, right here, right now. 
And hopefully, you're being quickened. Hopefully, someone was edified by something that was said. There was a lot more I could have brought out. But you know, there's always more that could have been brought out. I just hope that someone was edified. I, I want to give all praise to Yahshua the Messiah. Thank you very much, Chicago, for having this thing. Thank you, choirs, for all the singing you did. I loved it. Brought tears to my eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Rick. So how, do, how many of you knew Rick used to be a painter? That was his vocation. Didn't you see he painted a pretty picture yeah. of this gospel? Aw, yeah. oh, thank you, Callie. She's the only one that got it. <laughs> <laughs> and for our, I'm sorry, before I announce our next speaker, we're happy to announce another returning visitor, Miss Rachel Smith from Chicago. Welcome back. <laughs> And for our next speaker of the evening, we're happy to call from my Douglasville, Georgia branch, Dr. Deborah Williams. Thought I saw her. Oh, there she is. Y'all know her phone went off, right? <laughs> I threw you right under the bus, Deborah. It is like all the way under there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm thankful to be here. I got some things highlighted. When you call, when I call for him. Um, I'm thankful to be here and uh, to be a part. They have been brought down to be a part of this great gospel. See, this is the truth for the new people. You stick around long enough, this is the truth. Sent down from heaven. See, uh, there's a scripture in the Bible. Can I hear that? Where it talks about that. See, I found in the year 1931, had a divine vision accompanied by a divine revelation. I want to say this, if I sounded a little winded, it's because I am. I have breathing problems, okay? But Yahweh willing. You see what I'm saying? Yahweh willing. See. Um, I found in the year 1931, had a divine vision accompanied by a divine revelation. And he said, make me prove it. Now, you're not going to go too many places where they're telling you, make me prove it. And this is what he said, to your satisfaction. See, because what you hear down here, see, he offered proof and evidence to what he said, see. And there was things that he said, see, that we, at least when I came down here, I know, knew, dog, could no man do that. You know, doctors will talk about, they talk about the body all day long. I go to a doctor, I got a pulmonologist. You see what I'm saying? But that doctor can't tell me, none of them can, why you made like you made. The only one that can tell us that is the one that made us. All they know is that your heart is supposed to be 70 minutes, 70 beats per minute. They know if it don't, something off. You know, you go to the eye doctor. The eye doctor say you're supposed to have 20 20 vision. If you don't, you need glasses. But they can't tell you why. You have 33 vertebrae coming down the spine of your back. See, that's the importance of this tabernacle, see? Because when I came down and said, it was said that our creator, as this previous speaker said, is threefold. 
See, by this tabernacle. See, he's the archetype original pattern of the universe. And you know what? He proved his own existence. He proved his own existence. Romans 1, 19 and 20. See, the previous speakers told you that Yahweh, in his abstract state, is no shape and form in visibility. And he took on a shape and form known as the word of son. This is Yahweh moving from the abstract state into the intermediate state, super incorporeal form of a man. See, that was only, he's only seen in visions and revelations. See, when I came down here, uh, I was told, because see, really, I hadn't heard of the names. I had a vision, what you talking about? The only vision I knew about is these two, physical. What are you talking about a vision? You see what I'm saying? Then I was told, said, it was said, say, look, they would go through the moderation, and then it would be said, and you must have a vision too. And I would sit there, and I would look, and I'd be sitting in my seat, what are you talking about? You see what I'm saying? Because in the moderation, they told me that he was only seen in visions and revelations. Now, by me not having an understanding, I said in my heart, man, so what am I supposed to see this elohistic form? I'm on Hebrews 1.18. Hell. You see what I'm saying? So what are you talking about? I'm thinking I'm supposed to see this elohistic form. You see what I'm saying? Not understand. And it took some time. That's why I said come back. Because it took some time for him to have me continue to come down here. And one day I'm sitting before the charts. It was, I was told that we were sitting before a vision. I didn't know that this was the vision. Didn't know that. Even though these charts are a pictorial illustration, and this is the vision drawn out, I didn't know that. You see what I'm saying? And they were saying that you must have a vision too. Give me Hebrews, I think it's 118. Hebrews 1 and 10. And you, Yahweh, in the beginning have laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. Uh, now, I want to, uh, uh, yeah, it might be 11, Hebrews 11, 18, where it says about, see, we can have a vision accompanied by a revelation, him blessing us with the revelation of what we're seeing pictorial, pictorially drawn out right here in our heart and mind. See, I have never seen that Eloistic form, but I've seen them. And I do know. You see what I'm saying? That he's the, a super incorporeal shape and form of a man. See, I'm made in his image and likeness. See, I look like him. He don't look like me. He had the shape and form when he created us. I know that he's threefold. I can look at water and see that water, there's three states to water. Water in the gaseous state, water in the liquid state, and water in the ice state. But they are what? H2O. See, I know in the gaseous state, that's invisible. You see what I'm saying? But when it comes down, see, that's the liquid state. Then he manifested in the flesh. You can pick an ice cube up and drop it in the water. <laughs> you know, this thing is just wonderful. It's beautiful. Can I have that uh, scripture? I think it's Revelations. Because I'm going to stay on the vision. I mean, not Revelations, but Hebrews. I don't know where it is. He give us the revelation. Yeah, and to the knowledge. I don't know exactly where it is. See? Because that's what we're, I think he called it. But if you can't find it, don't worry about it. Hebrews 10 18. 11, 118 or 1118, Hebrews. Well, it wasn't Hebrews 
11 and 18. <laughs> yeah. Try 11 and 18. 11 and 18 is uh, Isaac's seed. Um, no, that's it. I, don't, don't worry about it because I'm bad. No. <laughs> like I said, I'm Wendy. Don't even worry about it. I'm bad. I'm bad with scripture. Oh, Ephesians 1.17. Ephesians. Ephesians 1.17. Uh, that Elohim, our Savior, Yahshua, the Messiah. That's it. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. May give unto us the spirit of wisdom. And revelation. See, this is how I see them. See, I'm talking about with my mind eyes. See, we could be sitting right in, in this room, right on that chair, and we can be caught up. See, he can catch us up. See, and he can show us things while we're sitting right in our chair. But go ahead and continue. Um, give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And the knowledge. It said in wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. See, it was coming down here. See, coming into one of these classes. First of all, he brought us in. Had us sit here. So for you new people, you're not here by mistake. You see what I'm saying? Had us sit down. You see what I'm saying? And here, see, because faith cometh by hearing. Can I have that scripture? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing is by the word of Yahweh. See, this gospel must be preached. I'm going to tell you something. When I was in the, when I came down here and said, look, Psalms 19th Division. It say the heavens declare the glory of Baal. You know how often I saw the sun go up and down? Now, I lived in Chicago, born and raised in Chicago. So I definitely saw the four seasons. Oh, you get them here. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You get a, a fall is a death. Winter is a burial. Spring is a resurrection. Summer is ascension. But it wasn't until I was brought down into this class. So I had to hear when they pointed that, when they said, well, that's showing forth his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. I'm like, what? <laughs> Tripping all over it. Couldn't see a thing. See, had to come down here and hear this great gospel and it be pointed out to me that that's what that, they mean. And you know what that means. And you know what? And the world don't know that. To this day, they don't know that. See? And if they do, you hear somebody mention something about it, it's because they got it from here. They have heard this doctrine. This doctrine has been all over the world. They went on three ecclesiastical peace missions. See, we're out here now in Zoom. So this, this thing is known. I stay in the South. I move to the South. And uh, I'm hearing some of your big time ministers mention little things that I know come from here. One of my sons is a Muslim, and he was playing Farrakhan one day. And Farrakhan mentioned, he said, you know, some innocent has to die for the guilty. I was like, wow. <laughs> he said, you know that chicken, something innocent has to give its life up. Then he went, you know that whatever they eat, you ate the chicken you eat. Where did he get that from? <laughs> so don't think this ain't been all over. And don't think that they have heard pieces of it. See, you see what I'm saying? But it's not going to do them any good because, like you say, they're still calling him Allah. They're still calling him Jesus. They got little bits and little pieces of it, then when we hear it, we can recognize it. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh, gotcha. Now where you got that one from? You know, but uh, I wanted to pick up on that vision. See, the previous speaker said, without a prophetic vision, the people perish. Remember, the previous speaker said, Elohim, this is a visionary form. 
He's only seen in visions and revelations. So when you go to the 24th chapter of Matthew, 24, um, when Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu went up, and then I also want Matthew, the 17th chapter. We're going to pick up these visions. See, 24th chapter of Matthew. Hey. Do you, do you want Exodus 24? Yeah, I'm sorry. Exodus. Um, then sorry. went up Moses, Thank you. Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now they saw the Elohim of Israel. See, they saw him. And the previous speaker, the first speaker said, they're going to describe him. He has, he has hands and he has feet. You know, we got hands. And we got feet. See? Told you. Came down here one day. We're sitting here. And then I looked at this and I heard that voice say, you know you look like me, right? <laughs> well, sure do. Sure do. The Messiah had what? Hands and feet. Then he? he also was nailed to that cross and had fingernails and toenails. Now what you going to do with that? You got him. What you going to do with that? He proved his own existence. And he proved so that we are, the, we are without excuse. Continue on. Um, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, the paved, a paved work of a sapphire stone. That's right. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Now, I heard the speaker say this. Now, that was the body of heaven in his clearness. Wasn't the flesh and blood clot body. In other words, clearly this was a heavenly body. If you saw, if you saw an angel, ain't nobody got to write you no letter. No, nah, this ain't no physical body. You see what I'm saying? Clearly that was a heavenly body. Go ahead. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Now, they saw Elohim, and they did eat and drink. Now, look, when I came in the class, it was said, now, they didn't take no picnic baskets up there. They didn't have no picnic baskets. They was taking in this heavenly vision. Continue on. And Yahweh said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give you tables of stone. And okay, law. what it, well, I won't wait, he said, and he laid not his hand. Oh, I'll read that again. 11, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Now, upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. So what that means is he just didn't get them an understanding. See, and you know what? You can see that because when they came down out that mount, see, they were told to stay up there and wait for Moses and Moses to come back, Moses and Joshua, they came down. They were like, oh, look, first of all, they went into a fiery cloud. What? They didn't know what happened to him. Oh, he burned up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They got impatient, and they left. You see what I'm saying? They left and went back down and built the golden calf. They know goodness well. They didn't see no golden calf in that mouth. But they built, had that golden calf built and say, let this be the God. Let this be the God. You see what I'm saying? So we can tell that they, he laid not his hand. Give me, now, coming down here, we was told that he was fulfilling. The world say that he was instituted. So if they saw him up here, Matthew 17 chapter. See, now, since it's here, it's got to be here. Matthew's. Five and 17. Yeah. They not. Yeah. And Matt, Matt. they not I, that I come to destroy the law and the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. <laughs> See, the world says that he came to institute. Yeah. But he's the author and finisher of our faith. It was instituted back here, see, and it's fulfilled. See, he came in to fulfill that which is written. So now if they saw him, see, he's got to take up somebody, see, 
it was Moses, I mean, um, Aaron, Nadab, and in, in the Bayou, he has to take up Peter, James, and John, see, in fulfillment, see, give me the fulfillment, the Mount of Transfiguration. Matthew 5 and 17. <laughs> I won't be up here long because I'm getting a little windy. 17 and 1. And after six days, Yahshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up unto a high mountain apart. And it was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as the light. He took them up, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. See, go here. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Eliah talking with him. Then he answered Peter and said unto Joshua, Sire, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Eliah. See, it had to be a tabernacle mentioned here, but he's talking about three. In fulfillment, see, of this tabernacle. See, when Moses went into that mount, he saw our creator instantaneously transform into a threefold intangible tabernacle. It was told to come down out the mount and build this tangible tabernacle. So you got the fulfillment, see, of them, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, seeing a vision back here, and now he's transfigured before them. I want where he say television and no man. See, because this is truly a vision. See, now when we see him, that's how we're going to see him. That's the only way we can see him is in a vision. But I want back here where he says television to no man. 17 and, and 9. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahshua charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Tell the vision to no man. Tell a son of man, be risen again. See, it was little stuff like that that was pointed out to it. Well, what do you mean again? If it's again, that means you had to do it before, right? See? Until he said, no man taketh my life. I lay it down. And I pick it up. You see what I'm saying? So he, we found out one of the biggest mysteries that, uh, the, that was already about, uh, about Joshua the son of Nun. That's one of the biggest mysteries that's been perpetrated on mankind. The Yahshua the Messiah was back here. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. He was back here with Moses. See, he's the author. See. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Right. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Right. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was the Messiah. Now, you know what? It was coming down, down there. Say, follow this wrong. Sorry. That was King James. See, that's what King James put in there. But they drank of that rock. That, yeah, left them. See, because the Messiah ain't following us. We follow him. You see what I'm saying? It says those that are led by the Spirit. See, they followed that cloud up out of the land of Egypt. See, go ahead. Uh, but with, sorry. Uh, but with many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now these things were our examples. Right. To the intent we should not lust after evil things. Right, because what I, I want to stop you there, because what I wanted is that, see, they followed him. See, and we can look back at our types and shadows and see when they were brought up out of the land of Egypt, they followed the cloud, which was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. You also have where it says, those that are led by the spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh. 
See, so we're supposed to be following him. Uh, it's something I got highlighted in there. So I'm getting winded. Uh, in there, I want the, the name of that transcript is the revelation of Yahshua from heaven. I want some of the highlighted parts in there because this is about eschatology and that's the end, the end of things. See, how is this thing going to go out? They already, see, there are speakers that told you that there's seven ages in dispensations. See, I was reading the transcript of Dr. Kinley. Like, you had this creative age, first age. It was ended, Garden of Eden. It was ended that when he had the angelic creation, this dotted line, and the physical creation. Then we got over here, this second age in time. I mean, second age, sorry. Second age, in, second age first age in time, which is, and Adam all died. See, Adam was placed in that garden. This is called the age of conscience. He was age placed in the garden, and that serpent entered the garden and deceived Eve. Adam willfully died for his bride. See, this is the antediluvian age. See, this is the second age, but the first age in time. This age is the post-diluvian age. Now, some of the speakers have brought out that, look, we got seven days. Yesterday had to end for the day to come. You got seven days in a week. You see what I'm saying? You got seven ages and seven dispensations. See, we are currently in this present kingdom age, which is the third age in time, started by the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. This is the present kingdom age. And we were given a present. That's the Holy Spirit. See, we were given a present in this age in time. See, and the speakers have been bringing out beautifully that we are saved by grace through faith. See, he came in and he put an end to those cardinal ordinances that was given to Jews and Jews only. Now, we got an adversary down here. See, they couldn't keep it. It was actually 613 ordinances. That's up under that old covenant. See, they couldn't keep it, so he had to come in. Now, look, that dragon. That adversary, he's our adversary. He's not Yahweh's. I was thinking about this one day, and I made a comment talking to somebody. I said, you know, he's Yahweh's adversary. Now, listen, when you come down here, you will realize that he talked to you, and he corrects you. I heard a voice say, heard that voice say, no, he's your adversary. <laughs> Give me James, because whatever he tell you, he's going to verify. He said, he's my opponent. He's your adversary. Give me James. Where I say the devil, our adversary. I'm like, okay, Joshua. Okay. See, he really is the teacher down here. See. And he brings all things back to our remembrance, whatsoever we have, we have heard. But I want you to hold that when I get this. See. We got an adversary, we got an adversary down here. And he said, I will be an enemy unto your enemy. Let me tell you something, we can't fight him. We got to have him. Do you see what I'm saying? Because it's him, Joshua, the, once we find out who Joshua the son of Nun is, he fought and he laid his life down. And we was told, and he didn't get a scratch. He didn't get a scratch. Do you see what I'm saying? And he took their crowns. Now, you know that's something. Go ahead. Talk about something powerful. First Peter uh, 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about, 
seeking whom he may devour. Now you see who adversary that is? That's our adversary. Ain't none of him. Ain't none of his. That's our adversary. So what he did was he took those cardinal ordinances, that old dragon, see, and he drug them over here. There's also a scripture that says, when you see the abomination of desolation standing, where it ought not, them cardinal ordinances shouldn't be over here. The devil drug them over. See, and then to, like Dr. Kimley said, you show anywhere in that Bible where a Gentile ever was given the law, you ain't gonna find it. You see what I'm saying? Drug them cardinal ordinances over and put us, told us that that was something that we had to do. As one of the speakers said, see, Judas hung himself when he betrayed him, so he didn't see the resurrection. You see what I'm saying? But am I holding anything else? 24 and 15 are your packets. Yeah, you can go to that. The name of this transcript is the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah from heaven. Go ahead. And we're talking about eschatology, the end of things. And Dr. Kennedy talked about this. He talked about it in this, in this uh, transcript. It's out there on Wiki, so you can download it if you want. Go ahead. Now, suppose I say this. Now, we have been talking. We have been talking about the revelation of him from heaven. Now, we're talking about the universal revelation of him. Because, see, those that have the Holy Spirit, that's in Thessalonians. We are not children of the light. He's already been revealed to us. See, but we're talking about the universal revelation of Yahshua, the Messiah. The Messiah said, I'm the light of the world. See, they had light. It's a separation down here. And in Goshen, the children of Israel had light. When they came out into this wilderness, that cloud was a pillar of fire by day, I mean by night, and a cloud by, and a, and a, they, in other words, children of Israel was never in the dark. See, these are types Shadows, allegory. See, we're children of the light. See, because he's the light of the world. See, once we receive the Holy Spirit. See, we ain't thinking. We know. One of the speakers said yesterday, see, we got to know something down here. See, we can't tell you the time of the season. We can't, you know, we don't, we don't know. What time? Because it says in 2 Peter 3 and 8 that he's coming as a thief in the night. You see what I'm saying? But he's coming as a thief in the night. Look, they waiting for him to come back and set up a kingdom. They don't know that he's already here. He has a body walking the earth plane. There are people walking around with the Holy Spirit. There are people down here. See, and this is what this thing is about, having that lamb in us, see, having that blood on the inside of us. See, we got our shoes, we got our staffs in hand, see, our shoes on our feet, our staff in hand. Now, I have breathing problems, and one thing that he did show me, he said, now look, you don't know. I don't know when my last day is going to be. None of us know. Now, I heard a speaker that said, said this one say, because if you knew when you were dying, most of us wouldn't go to sleep. <laughs> we scared to death. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? None of us know. But what he did tell us through our schoolmaster is to be ready. You see what I'm saying? They had that lamb in them. They put that blood on the door. They had their kneading boards on their back. They had their shoes on their feet. And they had their staff in their hand. And they was ready to go. Now, you get sick, you kind of realize that stuff. Oh, goodness. You see. You see what I'm saying? But could read on. And I wanted to make sure that you understood that. Uh -huh. And I'm saying to you, 
which some of you say, well, I never saw a vision. I don't understand about visions. Now, Dr. Williams has stood there and explained it. But listen, we've all got a song. We've all got us. I think it's on the other side. It? It's two sided today. On the first page, it's okay, another okay. side. Just in case you have ever seen one, you'll see one. You got one coming, and listen, you'll see it too. And you will be there. He said, Now you got a vision coming. Everybody got one. See? Those who don't see him now, oh, they got one coming. Everybody, because it's say every knee going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess. So he says, now, you don't believe in visions? You got one coming. Oh, we got one. You got one coming. And like he said, ain't going to be no stuff about, well, I ain't going to be there. I can't make it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Everybody is going to stand before him. See, you forget about that. Continue on. You will be there, and you will definitely see it. You're going to see it. We're going to see him. If you haven't seen one, you will see one. If you haven't seen one, you're going to see one. Go ahead. And nobody says, well, I don't believe in a ghost. If you haven't seen a ghost, you will see a ghost. Look. <laughs> Look. This is a ghost-like figure of a man. Clearly, that's a heavenly body. And you're going to see it. Look. This is real. You see what I'm saying? This is what I'm trying to get across. This is real. We're not talking about, well, maybe it's going to happen. See, we know that the first age ended with the flood. We know that. Now, the world missed that. You see what I'm saying? But the first age ended with the flood. He told them that it was going to rain, and it did. See, that closed out that age. That flood closed out that age. Galatians, what is it? Uh, once at the, end of the uh, end of the age for the second age, see, they missed this one too. But that second age in, in time ended. See, they missed it. But this time, he said, he's making a full end. Heaven's everything going out. Sun, moon, stars, everything going out. Do you see what I'm saying? He's going to make a full in, but continue. Somebody said, well, I don't believe it. It don't make no difference. You'll see it anyhow. Don't make no difference. We don't care if you believe it or not. How we don't I care. Do? It don't make no difference. Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We can't tell you when. We're not calling no dates. But we do know. Look, you can look at what's going on down here. I was sick yesterday, so I couldn't come down to class. You know, I had to stay in my room. I was watching TV. When you look at world news, I'm saying world news. It's chaotic and bad all over the world. You see what I'm saying? They're fighting wars. They're starving people in Sudan. They is, the world is literally in utter chaos. But we was also told this. It came in chaotic. It's going out chaotic. You see what I'm saying? And ain't nobody going to argue with you over that. You know, you can't walk down your street. You see what I'm saying? We can see that these people's heart and minds is just messed up. But continue on. Now, how did I do? <laughs> yes, indeed. Now that's what that is. Now that's what we've been trying to tell you. We've been trying our best to tell you about such things as that so that you won't be confused about it. So now he don't want us confused. You see what I'm saying? Because he didn't told us what's going to happen. I got something else highlighted too. Yep. We've all got a song is in your, we've all got a song is you're all on the alt. Listen, you're all on there whether or not you know it. He said, now, they used to sing a song that you're all, Leviticus 17 and 11, that you're all is on the altar. You know the earth is an altar? Just like this brazen labor where scientists do a test that there's fire in the heart of the earth. 
You know this is an altar? Because it's made by the pattern. Continue. Now he's talking about it. Continue. You may not know it, but it's there. Now let me prove it to you. Right. Any scientist will tell you that there's a fire in the center of the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to argue, tell me then where the volcano eruptions come from, if there wasn't a fire there. Ain't that hot molten lava? And they tell you, you better get away from that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? When it explodes. Go ahead. See that fire? And the earth is the altar upon which you are on. Right. The altar. The earth is the altar on which we are on. I want to leave Leviticus 17 and 11. Le but continue on. Now then, the earth that you're upon, there's a fire in the center of the earth that you're upon. The earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that's no different. That's no different than this altar here and the fire in that grate. Ain't no, no different. different than this altar here. Go ahead. And you are upon the earth, all of you too. Is that right? And you're upon the earth, all, the, all of you too. Go, he, go ahead where he say, and all that you have is on there. Read that. Then I'm on Leviticus 17 and 11. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're all on there, everything. Yeah, all our, our, our everything is on that altar. Leviticus 17 and 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Then don't this altar have four points of blood? Where that priest had to slay that sacrifice and put blood on the four corners. See, his death went to the four corners of the earth. Leviticus, go ahead, continue. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make He did atonement. what? And I have given it to you. He gave it to us. Upon the altar. Mm -hmm. See, that's why it's important that we believe in him. Continue. To make an atonement for your souls. Because it's it, the... Go ahead. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. It's the blood. See, that body was the container for the blood. See, but the life of the flesh is in the blood. See... Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remissions of sin. See, that's why they had to put them sacrifices on that altar. See, it had to be some blood. You see what I'm saying? But the life of the flesh is in that blood. So that's why, see, that body, he said, sacrifices and offering, thou would or not, thou wouldest not. But a body, but a body. You see what I'm saying? Give me that. And then I'm going to have my seat. Hebrews 10 and 5. And I think it's also in Psalms. Ten, Hebrews 10 and 5. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering you would not, but a body have you prepared me. That's a specially prepared body. That body was the container for the blood. That high priest on the day of atonement had to go up into that most holy place and he had to take blood. He had to take blood. If he didn't do that, they'd pull the flesh out and drug him out of there. You, you see what I'm saying? For the life of the flesh was in that blood. Uh, I want the Messiah... That Elohim was in the Messiah. That's the life of the flesh that's in that blood. See, reconciling the world unto himself. Second Corinthians 5 and 19. Uh, to wit, that Elohim was in the Messiah reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses upon them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Mm hmm so it was Elohim that was in that body. So if you got anything out of this, all honor and all glory belongs to Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior King. And I'll give the floor. Hold that for one second. No problem. Thank you, Dr. Williams. You notice how Yahweh gave her her breath back, which is awesome. Um, that does conclude our lecture for this evening. 
Um, we do hope you enjoy the lecture. And for those of you that, that do not know, um, Iran has attacked Israel um, with drones and missiles. So be ready. Be ready. Um, our total head count today, I'm sorry, for this session is 297 souls. And we had 112 YouTube visitors. So awesome. And um, for, was it Aunt Kathy, uh, Unita, and Rachel, come on back, please. Yahweh called your name specifically. So please listen to that and come back and join us again. We appreciate you. Um, yes. And all our other visitors as well. Uh, the raffle will begin after the doxology has concluded. Tomorrow's class will be, um, oh, sorry, testimony class will be 8.30 to 10 tonight. This class is about sharing a testimony, how Yahweh has done something for you to encourage others of his divine power. Each testimony should be no more than seven minutes. Tomorrow's class is at from 9 to 11.30. Choir will start singing at 8.30 a.m. May we all stand to be dismissed. We are going to recite the last two verses of the uh, book of Jude, and this is our doxology, which is reverence to our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present your soul faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, before all times, now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you. 